Welcome to another flute review, looking at another flute from my collection. This particular flute is made by Gary Cool. His last name is spelled K-U-H-L. They live in Crow, Oregon, which is a little bit outside of Eugene, Oregon. And he makes his flutes a little bit differently than many flute makers do. I found out about him through uh, looking at some videos and things. I noticed this design of a, a block, fetish block, in some pictures I thought was pretty neat looking. Um, and so I did a little follow-up research. He makes his flutes in a two-piece design. So he uses a router to do the inside of the bore, a slow air chamber up here. But he also uses the router to shape the outside of the flute. Um, he uses a round over bits um, in the sizes that he needs. This particular flute is in the key of F sharp minor. And I chose this because one of the videos that uh, attracted my attention was by an artist that I was becoming familiar with as I first started my flute journey, and that was Mary Youngblood. And she was playing this, not this exact flute, but this flute uh, that Gary had made. And um, I found out about him through his wife, who was the host of the first flute circle, kind of in the western part of the U.S. Um, that is no longer, I, I don't remember what the name of it was, but I, I talked with her about starting a flute circle because I couldn't find one that was close by. And in talking with her, I met her husband, Gary, and I looked at um, her flute collection, which makes mine look minuscule, quite honestly. Their, her flute collection is immense and absolutely amazing. Gary started making flutes because when she was looking at buying her third flute or so, something like that. He says, well, I can make those. And so he started making them. And he makes a wonderful flute. The bore, th the bore diameter is 7 eighths on this one. It has a wall thickness of maybe 3 sixteenths, something like that. It's, it's pretty thin wall. He uses, on almost all of his flutes, he uses African blackwood for the mouthpiece, which is done as in one piece after the two pieces are glued together. He, he does a tenoned mouthpiece, nipple style end. And he has a couple of different fetish blocks that look similar. This is what he calls his eagle. And he has another one, and, and I don't it's shaped slightly different. It has, I think, a little bit more of a, a, a bump up here on its head. Um, the true sound hole and nest area is also a little bit different. The, the flue is made on the bottom of the block. And in most cases, the nest area is flat all the way across. On Gary's flute, it is not. He has a little step where it's, it's flat right here until it gets to the true sound hole. And then it, it jumps up just a little bit to try to get the edge of the true sound hole centered more in the airstream. So it can be a little bit shorter true sound hole than many when they have 
the um, flue area in the block itself, on the bottom of the block. So that's his solution on trying to get that uh, the cutting edge or splitting edge centered in that airstream that the flue creates. Does a great job. He has a very, very tiny chimney. It, it only sticks out maybe a sixteenth of an inch just to help direct the air. And it does angle slightly down towards the true sound hole. And that does help move the air downward slightly also. And that with his stepped uh, nest type solution is the way he voices his flutes. And here is the way the flute sounds. sound, very articulate flute, responds immediately to any input that you might put into that for embellishments, things like that. I have to be a little bit careful on breath control. Um, this will go to the higher octave a little easier than some flutes. makes a smooth transition if I if I just increase my breath pressure gradually. If I use a uh, real hard tonguing technique, it'll go there immediately unless I, I kind of back that off a little bit. So it, beautiful, beautiful sound, beautiful playing flute. He uses um, uneven hole spacing as do many. Uh, many makers find that this produces a flute that will do the cross fingerings and things like that a little bit better in tune and have the holes a little bit more consistent in sizing also this way. So the flute maker, Gary Cool, he goes by Spirit Bird Flutes. Um, and he doesn't have a website. He sells, I know, through the Vashon Island uh, Flute Gathering um, nowadays. And uh, if you find one of his flutes online, I've never seen one that I haven't liked. I, don't, I only own this one right now. I'm not quite sure why I don't own more. Um, I almost picked up another one lately, but I missed out on that one. So Gary Cool, Spirit Bird Flutes, an amazing flute. Oh, and, and the outside, even though it's done with a router and everything, it is beautifully round here. As it gets up into this area, um, it has a slight squared feel to the nest area. Not a lot. And then it rounds back out over here in the uh, slow air chamber area. 
Gary Cool of Spirit Bird Flutes out of Crow, Oregon. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already so that you are aware when I post a new video that might be doing a review of one of the flutes from my collection. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.